Hey guys, this is Doug. We'll fix it. Um, back with the BM. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bleed the cooling system. Now the reason for that is um, on a long four-hour drive, around four hours, I had the coolant light come on, um, and then when I checked the coolant the day after, it looked fine. There may be a very small leak somewhere in the, or a hairline crack in the expansion unit. But the thing is, the car with the coolant system was pressure tested maybe a year ago um, so there might be something but it's unlikely anyway the other issue I've got is my heating system the internal heaters um, when the car's standing idle there's no heat coming from the vents it's only when you put some revs on we get some heats so there's probably an air blockage um, an air pocket in the heater core so the coolant has to flow through the heater core the hot coolant to actually bring heat to you inside the car so there's probably an air blockage in the heater core um, and then what we're going to do is try and bleed that out now I've bled out I, I did bleed the system maybe two weeks ago and it did improve it um, so I'm going to do it again because I think there is still an air blockage the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jack this car up on uh, the passenger side because I want see so this is the this is the, the cap and then this is the bleed the bleeder valve right so we're going to take them both out but i want this to be the highest point on the car so i'm going to jack it right up on this side on this side of the wheel so then any air that is trapped will have a high point uh we'll be able to exit from the highest point in the car i won't get stuck so we're going to jack the car up so we so this valve is pretty much the highest point in the in the cooling system so any air that is in there actually does come out so we're going to give that a shot now so hopefully this will remove any other air blockages if there are any in the heating system and get that fully running so it's pretty it's working better than it was before but like i said to about hit, hit about three thousand revs to actually get the heat flowing inside the internal cabin um whereas now it's probably be out around one and a half thousand two thousand revs so i think there's still an air blockage so when you rev it it applies more pressure uh, on the coolant side so then that pushes the air in the, that's in the heater core at the moment so we're going to try and bleed the system and I'll show you what to do so let's first thing we're going to do is jack the car up on this side make it higher so that this bleeder valve is the highest point now we're going to take these two off and then there's a couple of things you need to do inside the car um, and turn on to make sure that the air the coolant is flowing and any air that's in there is starting to flow out so let's do that first all right so the car's jacked up so now this valve the valve is pretty much the highest point in the car so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the cap we're gonna open the car's cold by the way um so make sure you don't open it when it's hot because it's gonna be really bad i mean in terms of the coolant coming out so let's open up the two things uh where's my screwdriver be gentle with this once i actually snap this plastic in half on the valve on my on my uh, e39 and never over tighten this because it will break it's just a plastic it's just a plastic uh, screw let's get that open then we're gonna put that to the side we need to get this open I'm gonna need two hands give me a sec so that's open now what we're gonna look for now is uh, what we're gonna need to do is actually top this up a little bit more until we see a uh, fluid coolant coming out of here and then once we get to that point, then we're going to actually uh, turn the key on. Well, not the ignition, but key setting two and the heat and temperature to max with a low fan speed. And then just hopefully let's see the bubbles come out. So let me just put some coolant in for you a second. One second. So I'm just going to pour some coolant in until it starts to come out the, the bleeder valve as well. And remember, this is a specific coolant for this car. It needs to be 50-50 mix with distilled water and the BMW couldn't just let it pour out a bit so if there are any air bubbles just let it overflow a little bit it's fine and you can see there are a couple of bubbles coming out until it starts to run clear you see the bubbles coming out from the bleeder valve good yeah you see it's quite a bit actually so just keep pouring it and we will have to take some coolant out to make sure it's not over overloaded there's actually quite a few bubbles coming out so i think because wow that's actually a lot more than i thought and i think because the cars are higher jacked up 
at a higher point, we are getting more and more bubbles coming out. Okay, I think that's fine. Now what I'm going to do is actually... Um, so I'm going to put the cap back on. And what I'm going to do is just close it, leave the bleeder valve open. You can still see some coolant coming out. Quite a bit of air did come out from the valve. Did come out from the valve right there. So, and there's still a few bubbles coming out. You can see them. I'm just going to close this off. And then what I want to do is um, we're going to go into the car. Okay, so in the car, we're going to set it to ignition setting two. So we don't want the engine to start, but we want the fans and everything to start. So then, And then here, what we're going to do is set the temperature to max to 32 degrees. And then also just lower the speed of the fan, sorry. Uh, not that low just it and what that's going to do is that's going to turn the, the the auxiliary pump on to the heating pump for the coolant and actually start to flow allow the air to flow around so let's go back to the uh, bleeder valve you can actually hear the valve is on uh, the pump is on and i can hear it and i can see there's a bubble that's actually just come out so we're going to just let this run until the bubble stop coming out for about five minutes so i can hear the pump just going i can hear it buzzing um, and you can see there's a little bubble right there. We're just going to keep watching this. And until you see, basically, see the bubbles right there. So we'll pop that. See what else comes out. We'll give it, let it run. If it runs for about five minutes without any bubbles, then you can stop. And then all we need to do is close that bleeder valve up, siphon out the rest of the coolant so it's at the correct level, so it's not overfilled. And you can do that with this syringe, which is what I've got, so I'll do that as well. So that's good. I can hear it buzzing. So we're just going to keep it going, keep it going. If you see bubbles come out, just wait now until you see no bubbles for five minutes. All right, so I'm going to just pop. There's no, no air has come out of the system for a while now, for at least five minutes. So I think we're good. I'm just going to pop this bleeder valve back in. Um, and remember, don't over tighten it and don't drop it into the engine bay like I'm about to do. There we go. I'm just going to get that in nice and firm, not too tight, otherwise it will break. It's just a piece of plastic. And, and then what I want to do is just siphon out any excess, excess coolant. So what I'm going to do is just siphon out some of this with the syringe. Um, and you can see it's hitting the top. Um, and it needs to be around here, but it's being forced up by the excess, excess coolant. So I'm just going to keep drawing it out and just putting that away until it gets to the right level once that's done we're just gonna pop the cap back on and we'll let the engine run to make sure there's no other air pockets we'll just let it run and keep your eye on the temperature gauge it needs to stay bang in the middle on the temperature gauge so let's just quickly let me just quickly tighten this so I've got the engine running now and what I want to do is make sure just keep watching this gauge and you can, there's a couple of keys you can press to get the actual temperature, but just make sure that it stays bang on. Run it for a, take it for a quick little drive, make sure there's no air. If it starts to overheat, it means you've probably got an air pocket somewhere still, and you need to re-bleed it again. Um, so I'm gonna let this run for a couple of minutes, take it for a little quick drive, you know, a mile or two, just to make sure that uh, everything's flowing and there's no, um, no other air pockets and you should be good to go. Any questions, hit me on the channel. Thanks for watching. Like the video, sub the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.